Welcome back. President Obama set to bid the nation farewell tonight. Before he says goodbye, let's take a look at some memorable farewell addresses from presidents past. Joining me right now is presidential historian and author of the new book, Game of Thorns, Doug Weed with us. Good to see you, Doug. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. Boy, you're up awful early. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. So I want to ask you what you're expecting from President Obama tonight. And of course, we want to look back at, at uh, various presidents. First off, your thoughts on tonight's speech. Well, uh, I hope, I cherish for him uh, some dignity in leaving. Uh, I, I feel in the last few days he's been rather petulant, and it's hard to leave the White House. It's like landing in Denver. It's always going to be bumpy, and uh, he, he's having a rough time, I think. So I'm hoping he'll maintain his dignity uh, in what he says uh, in this farewell and doesn't live to regret what he said. All right. So, you know, you make, you make a good point. I like that analogy. It's like uh, it's like landing in Denver because the president seems to be having a hard time um, leaving as he, I guess, knows that President elect Trump is planning on reversing a lot of his policies. But let's look back for a moment, Doug. The farewell address of our very first president, George Washington, warned against foreign influence in politics. Now, I know you like this part of his speech in particular. Uh, why, uh, and, and, and he says this, why by interweaving our destiny with that of any part of Europe, entangle our peace and prosperity in the toils of European ambition, rivalship, interest, humor, or caprice. It is our true policy to steer clear of permanent alliances with any portion of the foreign world. Why is this address so impactful in American history, Doug? Yes, and it's read every year in the U.S. Senate. It'll be read again this year by uh, the senator from Maine. It's impactful because the founding fathers feared our entangling alliances, is the words they put. We have President Barack Obama sending tanks, even as we speak, to Poland. We can't quite police the streets of Chicago, but we keep insisting on policing the world. And you have George Washington's speech, and then uh, a couple hundred years later, you have George W. Bush's speech where he says the opposite. We've got to be involved in the world. We can't be isolationist. But it's important to remember Washington's original fear and to consider it. Uh, he also, by the way, talks about these carefully uh, developed Bill of Rights and Constitution and how easily they can be lost. Maria, when I hear someone on TV say, I have nothing to hide, I'm not afraid, they can read my emails, they can listen to my phone calls, I have chills go down my spine because it, it, it's not that you have something to hide. Washington didn't have anything to hide. Adams and Jefferson were not part of a criminal class that was hiding their nefarious actions. They had over many years developed this careful balance of the rights of the citizens against government and tyranny, and that's what Washington's farewell address was all about. Don't lose it. it we fought hard to get here. Please, please, don't mess this up. Yeah. You know what? You make a really good point, and I like what you said. We can't really uh, police the streets of Chicago, and yet we want to police the world. That's a really interesting thought. Let me ask you about Eisenhower. Back in 1961, President Dwight Eisenhower gave his farewell address, uh, which is now commonly referred to as the military-industrial complex speech. Let's take a listen of, uh, to part of that. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals, so that security and liberty may prosper together. <laughs> Doug, That's what made great. that speech so memorable? Oh, I, that may be the greatest farewell speech of all times. It's memorable because it's prophetic. It's like Nostradamus. It's amazing. Uh, and he was a military man, so he knew he was the one that had to say this. And it was a parting warning. He said, look, we got something going on here where with the lobbyists and with people making money off of war, there may be a tendency towards more wars. We got to get out of this. He was warning us of this cycle. And we have the same cycle, not only in the military industrial complex we have it today with corporations who use regulations to keep small businesses out 
and then pass right. stimulus bills that exempt them from the same regulations. So there are so, there is a, a corruption process that can sometimes happen, and Eisenhower was trying to warn us that it was it was already here, and he was worried. Yeah, real, real quick, any, any lessons for President Obama? Uh, <laughs> well, the president spend their whole time in office trying to shape what happens, and then they leave office, they spend right. their time trying to shape what we think happened. He, he would be wise, uh, he's one, to leave well enough alone and leave with some dignity right. intact. All right, we got to jump. Doug, good to see you. Doug Weed, uh, thanks so much. We'll be live on the president's speech tonight, and we'll be right back.